check one two check one two hello hello copy roger <laughs> is this thing on Give me a second here, guys. What is up, guys? Dashing here for episode 285 of Community Universe Mode, in edition number 5 of Reality Wrestling. Live from Hartford, of course, as always, as we are getting closer and closer to Dark Carnival, which is going to be at next Sunday in Action Pack Card, as always. Kicking things off, we're going to see for the first time ever Bludgeon in singles action. Be accompanied ringside by his tag team partner Trauma as he battles the self proclaimed King of the Jobbers and Troy Myers. What up, Hellish? This is midday edition of Reality Wrestling. Of course, the main event, we're going to have another Elimination Chamber qualifying match. It'll be Salim Ismail battling the fallen angel, John Reed. We had two men qualify last night on uh, Genesis. As we uh, saw Jay Davis defeat Kenji Murakami. And then Jeremy Blake win that triple threat match. Getting past Salvi and Pierre Thompson to join Randy Borton inside of the Demon's Domain next Sunday. Of course with the international title on the line. 
who's going to be the fourth to take up residence with them. The two other qualifiers are going to be next week on Genesis, as we'll see Kaiva battle Zach Cage and Andrew Briggs duke it out with Ryan Kent. And Troy Myers recently been uh, dubbing himself as the Giant Slayer. Taking down the likes of Hercules and the Witch Doctor. The wins he's picked up this season over Bannon and Billy Weaver. Hard to call himself the self-proclaimed jobber, but lately he has been falling back into those losing ways we once knew him for. So he's going to try to bounce back. It's not going to be easy. Got to get past the mountainous bludgeon. But like I said, this is the first time we're going to see the masked man in action solo. His partner trauma there. They've only been around in CMB for two months now. What up, 702? Going to see Jaquan Shea in action later on the co -Man event. He takes on Risa Matthews. I think that has the potential to be a very good match. We're also going to see Logan Cunningham in his second match up here in CMB. He'll take on Sal Kubas, the Knight of King and Company. Dang, they're going to go real dark. I have faith in your boy, Troy. He's, he's, he's pulled out some big upsets so far this season. And though I look at these two men coming down to the ring sends chills up and down my spine. I got to say, I don't know, man. I might have, to put your, might have to put your chips on Troy. He's got that singles experience at least. I figured there'd be more people because it's midday instead of doing it early like I usually do. Guess we gotta stick to mornings. Overslept this. <laughs> it was a wicked Genesis last night, man. Tuckered me out. This is going to be bludgeon in action on the left there. Troy Myers certainly gonna have to be wary. Of trauma ringside. Dope bellish. Appreciate you. Papa bless. I feel I feel a little bit bad for Troy Myers. Not too bad. But a little bit bad to be stepping into the ring with this man. These two coming off a victory on a Fusion earlier this week. They put down the Domestic Wolves. That matchup announced next Sunday for Dark Carnival. It has been confirmed that real number one Bubba's will be defending their Fusion Tag Team titles against two. We're going to find out on the show itself. As it's going to be Party Hard, Warriors Justice, and Hotline Miami in a triangle tag match. The winners will advance later on in the show to... Fight Shinaz and only a son of Sheik for the belts. Dark Carnival card shape would be very good. And despite the, besides, I should say, the Elimination Chamber, the main attraction there. We got Sam Valentine and Bannon facing off against Chris Andrews and an opponent of his choosing. Anderson Rex and Caden Kenner going to go one on one. And another matchup, ladies and gentlemen, just announced earlier today a fatal four way match. For the CMV Light Heavyweight Championship will take place next Sunday at Dark Carnival. Nikola Ivanovich will defend against El Jefe, Elijah Stewart, and King Matt. That is certainly going to be a fun match to see, to say the least, as we get underway here for Reality Wrestling. Edition number five and bludgeon right out of the... And of course my batteries have to die immediately, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Should have changed them before I started. What are you going to do? Got to get that, la that last bit of juice out. It's going to big old splash there from Bludgeon. Troy Myers not starting this match off probably the way he would have wanted to. 
bludgeon, catches him off guard. Look at these curb stomps down into the chest. Absolutely brutal. And lately, Desolation been the puppets, per se. And the left and right hand of Schmitty. Ever since Johnny Samson signed off their... Uh, well, they're not slaves. They didn't like, sign off their lives, but... Of course, they were before the personal bodyguards of Johnny Sam. Somebody signed off that right to Schmitty, and Schmitty's been using them as such to uh, get rid of his rivals, attacking Samuel Boone, the new gods. But, of course, they are a tag team on Fusion, which puts them in the division. And even a singles win could uh, boost them up the rankings there. Let's get a counter by Troy Myers, his first sign of life in this match. Shoulder block in the corner. Still to come tonight, Logan Cunningham in action. He battles Sal Kubas. Jaquan Shea going to take on Reese Matthews in the main event and Elimination Chamber qualify match. Who's going to join Jay Davis? Uh, Jeremy Blake and, of course, the champion Randy Borton will find out as Salim Ismail and John Reed will go at it. What up, Topher? Oh, look at Bludgeon. That massive power bomb just deadlifting Troy. And Myers is not doing too hot in this match. That's what he needs to mount a comeback. Punch to the gut and a nice tornado DDT. Better be a promo for my show, Topher. That's all I have to say. You missed my announcement, though, Topher. Another match made official for Dark Carnival next Sunday. A fatal four-way match for the CMB Light Heavyweight Championship. Nikola Ivanovic is going to have the odds stacked against him as he defends against El Jefe, Elijah Stewart, and King Max. It's going to be a fun match. I'm excited to see that one. A lot of unique personalities going to collide there. As bludging going to help Troy Myers up. Troy says, I'm fine. No, thank you. I can uh, handle myself. He's going to sit out sidewalk slam there by Troy. Now just looking over at bludging in disgust. Like I said, Troy been doing very well this season. Wins over Bannon. Over Billy Weaver. Pretty much essentially retired. Billy Weaver haven't seen him since. He took that loss to Troy Myers. And Troy actually bearing a fair bit of new talent as well this season. I mean, he he beat Hercules in Hercules' debut. We haven't seen Hercules since. And Troy not adverse to uh, facing bigger men. Came down to this with a head full of steam. But look at Bludgeon, the 300-pounder, just mowing over Troy Myers. Like, ain't no thing. Now a jawbreaker by Troy. Looking to get himself back for this match. Maybe go for a Troy Turner. Bludgeon not going to let it happen. Goes for a scoop slam. Drops down behind Myers with a back suplex now. And Troy going to try for it again. And we're going to get a Troy Turner. It looks like we are. Bludgeon can be in a spot of trouble here. There it is. Into the pin. Can he bring home the victory, ladies and gentlemen? Slap. He has to take that lap. One, two. Only a two count, though. My goodness. Come on, Troy. Oh, and now trauma. Ringside. Going to pull off them shenanigans. Distracting Troy allows Bludgeon to get back to his feet. Bludgeon grabbing Troy by the head. Front head lock and now into a... Oh, last call. Slappy almost getting mowed over there. As Bludgeon... I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what that was, to be honest. He's just trying to tear off the uh, top rope, it looked like. Action roll by Troy. Going to try to flip that switch, of course. Bludgeon not letting it happen. Front head lock into a European uppercut. Takes the gut hammer and sickle now. My goodness. Oh, and Bludgeon going to look to finish. As he just... Smashes Troy's face and bludgeoning him. This could very well be the end. Lateral press. One, two, three. Oh, no. Troy stays in it. Taking those punches like a champ. Knee. Oh, dragon. As Troy, Troy, looking to pull off another massive upset, ladies and gentlemen, as the self-proclaimed opener, Trauber, looks to flip the switch, but Bludgeon counters. And now Bludgeon, going to show off his strength, military press, and the spine buster, making my spine hurt. Now out of the corner, Bludgeon sizing up Troy. Oh, here we go. Gonna go for that earthquake splash. 300 pounds down into the chest. One, two, three, and Bludgeon scores the victory.
Yeah, I put I put Baby Trouble to sleep. I do that sometimes, stream my personal universe for him. Reality Wrestling kicking off with a pretty pretty good matchup here. I mean, bludgeon and control for the better part of it. Troy Myers had a couple of little comebacks here and there. But nothing that could get him the victory. Nothing that could turn it around seriously for him. It was just random matches, Hellish. It wasn't CMV. <laughs> Bludgeon proving he can handle himself in singles action as well, though he did have some help from uh, Trauma ringside there at that one point, just as it was looking like Troy was actually going to maybe come back and get the win. <laughs> Crashed, Topher. We got to like the final 10, and then Reese Matthews got eliminated, and it automatically crashed, so he just stopped streaming there. <laughs> Reese Matthews couldn't handle being eliminated. So he crashed my game. There's the finish. Bludgeon dropping 300 pounds down to the chest of Troy to keep him out. Speaking of Reese Matthews, ladies and gentlemen, he's in action for the first time in about a month since he was put on the shelf, actually, by that man right there and Trauma Ringside. He battles Jaquan Shea in what I think has a, the, the potential to be a great matchup. But first, we are going to have Logan Cunningham in action for the first time since his debut in the CMB Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. He takes on Sal Kupas, the Knight of King and Company. Joined by Salim Ismail. Seems like a sort of alliance forming between these two as they're trying to take the fight to King and Company. Of course, Logan Cunningham lost out first round to King Matt. Tried to get some revenge and cost King Matt his tournament uh, final match. But King Matt fought through, though he obviously lost in the end to Nikola Ivanovic. King Matt gets an become light heavyweight champion next Sunday, but he's not alone. El Jefe and Elijah Stewart joining him in a fatal four-way match for the championship. We'll see if Sal Kubas can get his king. Momentum here if Logan Cunningham can get himself his first win, of course, our main event later on. Elimination Chamber qualifier going to be that man ringside. Salim Ismail battling John Reed. To see who will join Jay Davis, Jeremy, Randy Borton currently. <laughs> uh, have you know, Topher, playing through that personal universe? Chris Andrews beat Justin Sane to win the Undisputed Championship. And then him and Mike Miles beat uh, Desolation to win the tag team titles. Chris Andrews did pretty well on the Rumble. He got a lot of eliminations. Powerbomb. I don't remember who he powerbombed someone over the top rope, though. I think it was the first elimination. It was pretty nasty. <laughs> All the things she could do in actual CMV. <laughs> Rip. Rip, never forget. Never forgetty. Just insane spaghetti. <laughs> a nap. Who takes a nap at four? When I just wait four hours when I go to bed, you lunatic, you psychopath, you weirdo. All right, let's get it on. This is certainly going to be quite the size difference here. Logan Cunningham might even be a cruiserweight. He's most definitely at least a light heavyweight. South Cuba, seven-footer. It's going to be quite the collision. Oh, here come them dollar dollar bills, ladies and gentlemen. Falling from the sky. Logan Cunningham kind enough to make a donation to the CMV Universe live in attendance. <laughs> Echo, where's that Paul Devine promo though? I'm looking to respond, fam.
Salim Ismail paying back Logan Cunningham. As Cunningham, who tried to help out Salim in the finals of the CMV Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. King Matt fought through the odds and was victorious nonetheless. He puts them on before the match. Seven he has a pre-match ritual. He's got to take off the hat. He's got to take off the sweater, the khakis, you know, the polo. And then he gets his gloves from ringside. Logan Cunningham ready for action. Looking to score his first taste of victory here in San Diego. Only a second match ever. The rich pretty boy. Damn. There we go. I was about to say, South East Side, you coming out anytime soon? What are you doing back there, man? Just hanging out, maybe deciding, nah, not feeling like it. Oh, my goodness. King and company, or rather just the company tonight, as it will be that man on the left, Sal Gubas the Knight in action, the Jester, his tag team partner joining him ringside. Topher, how do you feel about this music? The King, not here tonight, busy preparing for his light heavyweight championship match next Sunday at Dark Carnival. <laughs> A Randy Savage? That there we go. Let's get it on. Logan Cunningham severely outsized here by Sal Kubas. Oh my God, very outsized. I didn't realize that by that much. Oh, and immediately Logan Cunningham just run over with the thigh, the massive thigh of Sal there. Slapping him in the face like it ain't no thing. Up in the second turnbuckle, the big man looking to take a risk here early on and misses that leg drop attempt. Logan Cunningham going to have that quickness advantage at least. Going to have to use that. Let me try to keep Sal grounded. Watch out for the shenanigans of the Bollywood boy, Salim Ismail ringside. Hopefully he doesn't get uh, too involved in this matchup, though. Saves himself for the main event later on where he battles John Reed and an Elimination Chamber qualifier. A tweet here, ladies and gentlemen, from Bryce Hurt. Going to say, next week I'm calling out a former world champion on reality wrestling. Screw Alex Taylor. Screw Kaiva. I got bigger fish to fry. A former world champion. I wonder who Bryce Hurts talking about there next week on Reality Wrestling, though. Let's see what he's got to say as Sal Kubas getting back up and taking that Lutez. Stomp down onto the uh, nether region there as Logan Cunningham trying to shake the cobwebs. Sal Kubas not letting up. Salim Ismail cringing at the sight as he goes off the, goes, goes off the ropes. A couple of leg drops. Nice combination there. Connects. But Topher, are you ready for the, the, the reign of the human fish? I'm definitely putting my money on El Jefe. You should too, ladies and gentlemen. Come Dark Carnival. Slappy getting out of the way there. Almost a bad situation for him. Get a cheeky little Texas jab there. Overhand punch. Logan Cunningham is a striker. That's his uh, That's his go-to. This move set. I don't know much else about him. You haven't seen it. Like only one other match. It's a pretty good matchup, though, against King Matt. Falling short in the first round of the uh, tournament. A big old stomp from Kubas. Kubas is unorthodox. Can't really, can't really zero in on what exactly his style. Let's get a nice clothesline there by Logan. Dark Carnival is next Sunday. Oh, what is this? Oh, look at Salim Ismail ringside with them dirty heel tactics, sliding in a steel chair. Slappy doesn't see it. He's focusing on uh, this arm bar that Logan's got locked in right now. Look at him getting out of that with a, with a roll through. But Logan locking in a, a back arm bar there. Sal getting out of it. And another tweet, my friends, from Jay Davis this time. Oh, wait a minute. Look at Salim distracting Slappy. Logan Cunningham trying to use the steel chair. But Sal Kubas not allowing it. And now a rocker dropper right on the chair. Oh, Slappy. Oh, now Sal Kubas is going to take advantage of this situation. But Logan Cunningham counter whatever he's going for there. And this tweet from Jay Davis, guys, is targeted towards Bryce Hurt. Jay says, I can't feel but disappointed at how these kids think they should be given things they really 
when really their asses are only things given. Shameful. Talking about a little bit of rape there, I think, is J. Davis. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's get a reverse swinging STO. <laughs> Slappy finally disposing of the steel chair, and Salim Ismail trying to help out his boy here by distracting the Knight of King and Company, and Logan going to capitalize with a nasty DDT. <laughs> Logan now very proud of himself, despite the fact he's not been doing too hot in this match. Face first onto the steel chair, he went. Cheeky little jab once again, and another DDT. He's loving him right now. But yes, next Sunday, Topher. So we got Schmitty presents a Monday Night Fusion. Not going to want to miss that. I'm very excited. Going to go for another DDT countered by Sal. October Spooky Scary, the second annual Dark Carnival. We are four weeks away, my friends, from Regicide. The second annual Regicide. Every single championship going to be on the line. It's gonna be, that's eight title matches on one card. Certainly not going to want to miss that. Stomp down onto the arm there by Sal Kubas. Flipping Logan onto his stomach. Still to come tonight. Up next, the co-main event, Jaquan Shea and Reese Matthews going to go at it. A response from Bryce Hurt towards Jay Davis. He says, didn't you call out just about everybody when you first showed up? How'd that turn out? That savagery. And here's Salim Ismail once again distracting Sal Kubas and Logan Cunningham with a single-handed bulldog. And now going to go for a combination of strikes. I don't know why Slappy almost fell out of the ring right there. And that final hook right to the jaw. And look at Lenny Webster ringside just cringing at the sight of his tag team partner getting smacked in the next week. And now a couple of knees where the sh sun don't shine. My goodness. No, not this Sunday. Next Sunday, Topher. On Logan. Oh, my God. And another hook. Busts Kubas wide open. That could very well be it, my friends. Lateral press by Cunningham. One, two, three. Oh, so close, but no cigar. Imagine Logan Cunningham putting down the knight of King Matt. That would certainly be sticking it to him. As Logan backs up into the corner, right in front of Lenny Webster. Sal Kubas looking up at the lights. And a response from Jay Davis. He says, hey, not everyone can be Jay Davis. There's only one of me. And at least I'm not the one pulling a Jekyll and Hyde on whether I'm a face or a heel. And at least I'm going to be in a championship match. Dang. Savagery from Davis there. Some back and forth now between Sal Kubas and Logan Cunningham. Back and forth. They go tip for tap. Maury's not here, but it's like a reversal fest. As, wait a minute. Kubas, a second. Oh, he's going to kiss him right on the lips there, too. Swinging reverse STO a second time in this matchup. Oh, Gumble, not just in time. This match is, I, think, I do believe, nearing its end. Been pretty back and forth. Look at that reality check by the Knight, though. Logan Cunningham trying to stay alive. The blood trickling down the forehead there of Kubas. Looking like a nasty gasket, a zigzag from the seven-footer. Again? Oh, and now Sal looking for a, a hook of his own out of the corner. Bam! Right to the jaw, knocking Logan Cunningham right out. Flips him over, hooks the leg, slappy in position. One, two, three, and Sal Kubas going to bring home the win. Despite the multiple interferences by Salim Ismail, which backfired when he slid in that steel chair. And actually, Sal used it. A rocker dropper planting Logan face first right onto it. A tweet from the fallen angel, John Reed. He says, it's only going to take three seconds till I step into a structure that is made for me. John Reed, of course, talking about later on tonight, the main event where he will face that man, Salim Ismail. To see who takes the fourth spot inside of the Demon's Domain next Sunday at Dark Carnival. Join Jay Davis, Jeremy Blake, and the champ, the Moo Moo Man, Randy Borton himself. Logan Cunningham thought he had this match won right there after a nasty hook. Right to the jaw, but twas not enough. And Sally able to come back later on in a big hook. A nasty one, Superman punch. Gonna do the deed. A response from Bryce Hurt to Jay Davis. He says, face or heel? What's that? I am who I am, and I have nothing to hide, buddy. I'm the star of the show. It's only a matter of time until people start to realize that. 
next week on Reality Wrestling should help to prove my case. Really hyping himself up here is uh, Bryce Hurt, the former champion. There's not too many champions in CMB, so I got to wonder who he's planning on calling out. Oh, Big Punka coming to the party. Even a couple of streams since we've seen you. Welcome. Just in time to see your favorites. Sal Kubas of King & Company celebrating that hard-fought win. with Slappy just staring off into the distance. Hello, Dr. Smile, friend. Damn, Echo, packing that currency, bro. Coming event time, my friends. A matchup, as I said a couple of times this stream, that I think has the potential to be a very good matchup to steal the show here. Jaquan Shea going to be battling Reese Matthews. Reese has about a month on the shelf currently. Uh, thanks to an attack at the hands of Desolation and Schmitty. But he has actually returned at point break, saving Samuel Boone from an attack at the hands of Bludgeon and Trauma. We saw Bludgeon get that win at the top of the show, defeating Troy Myers. But he is now back to try to get into that ring, shake off the cobwebs or any ring rust that there is. But it's not going to be easy. Jaquan Shaven on a bit of a roll when it comes to pay-per-views, at least. Last time we saw him was uh, last Sunday, Point Break. He put down Nelson Jr. A tweet from El Jefe says, Amigos, I will win the light heavyweight title at Dark Carnival for all of my fishies. Arriba! So El Jefe confident. He heard the news. He's going to walk into Dark Carnival. He wants to walk out as the champion. I can't read whoever's tweet that is. It says it's lagging right now. The red block is taking up the thing. A tweet from James, though, simply says, Reese sucks. <laughs> of course, Schmitty's personal interviewer there. Don't miss Schmitty presents Monday Night Fusion. The go-home edition of Fusion before Dark Carnival next Sunday. You're not, I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be great. Here's that tweet from Jay Davis, folks. Targeted towards Bryce Hurt. Jay says, how about at Genesis? Can't waste my time on kiddies like you wanting to face the best of the rest. The man who's got the plan. I like watching my victims in reality wrestling. is going to be just that place. Well, Bryce Hurt says he has a plan of calling out a former world champion next week. If I recall, I don't think he, Jay Davis is a former world champion. But Jay Davis seems to want to get his hands on on Bryce Hurt, calling him out there for a match. Jaquan Shea, I love this attire. One of my favorite attires. <laughs> set, can we please have quiet on the set? Oh, Borton, you didn't hear the news. A new match has been added to the Dark Carnival card next Sunday. Nikola Ivanovich facing his biggest challenge yet as he puts his title on the line against El Jefe, Elijah Stewart, and King Matt in a fatal four-way match. I'm very excited for that. I might be more excited for that than the Elimination Chamber, to be honest. No, my favorite match is the Elimination Chamber, the 13th in CMB's history, the second time ever the international title will be defended in the Demon's Domain. Randy Borton putting his belt on the line, trying to set that record for most defenses. Longest reign. He's got to get through Jay Davis. He's got to get through Jeremy Blake. He's got to get through either Salim Mismal or John Reed. We'll see who qualifies later on in our main event after this match. Next week, it'll be Kaiva and Zach Cage going at it, and Andrew Briggs and Ryan Ken as well. <laughs> Borton, I pushed you too hard this season. It's time to see you punished. <laughs> it's time to see everything you love crumble. Here we go. Singles action. Jaquan Shea battling Reese Matthews. Slappy rings the bell. Lateral press. First time these two are ever facing off. Going to feel each other out a little bit. 
Collar and elbow tie up, slapping and a break in. There's Reese Matthews taking the cheap shot. Not really a defining face here between these two. They're both, uh, oh, there's that poison miss the Mountain Dew by Jaquan Shea, which has seen him take control of many matches. Remember when he did that against Adam Adams, and Adams didn't even get a hit in. Jaquan just killed him. Here's a tweet from Bryce Hurt, guys, responding to Jay. He says, don't got time for wannabes stepping into my spotlight. <clears throat> Oh, goes for a... Uh, Borton is in the mid-card. <laughs> He's the mid-card champion. Are you okay, Dynamic? Hey, Ryan Kent well, might have a chance to become the, the, the mid-card champion. He has a qualifier next week battling Andrew Briggs. Some clobbering blows to the back of the head there. Lifting Jaquan to his feet, looking to stand in control early on. Snapmare by Reese, taking a step back. Bring that neck down like it ain't no thing. Seated position now for JS as the new god member. Going to get off an elbow drop to the inner thigh. Up to the top rope now. They're going to take a risk. I don't know a whole lot about Reese Matthews, to be completely honest. He's only had a handful of matches. <clears throat> Last time we saw him in action, I believe he took a loss to Dennis Lewis. And then he's been out of action for almost a month thanks to Desolation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really dub him a high flyer, though. As Jaquan Shea up on the second turnbuckle. Looking to show us he ain't afraid to take a risk. The crossbody connecting successfully. And a tweet from Jay Davis says, And by spotlight, you mean the headlights of someone's car? Because, I mean, I'm Mr. Spotlight. I don't recall putting some light down on a lost child. Damn. This is Xbox One, Owen. This is a call universe mode. If you would like your call on the show, you are more than welcome to join. All you have to do is... Put into the chat, exclamation point CMV, exclamation point join. You can get a link to our website. We have a roster page, match cards, rankings, promo as your superstar, all that good stuff. Alberta, the midsection. The, we call them Vixens, Owen, in CMV. They have their own show. Jaquan straight to the top rope again. I wouldn't call Jaquan a high flyer either, but tonight he's looking, he's just zipping around like it ain't no thing. Looking to take a risk. Flying high. Oh, leg drop. Bulldog. That uh, old school Smitty from the top looking to pander to the GM next week is Jaquan here. Oh, and Jaquan with those Kiwi Crushers, the rapid kicks to the chest. And that final one going to go right to the back of old Reese's head. Dragging Reese out of the corner, making sure there ain't no rope break shenanigans. Lateral press, one, two, but only a two count. And Reese trying to... Trying to get back to his feet. Maybe now it looks like he might be done for it, guys. Jaquan Shea knows if he wants to put that extra little oomph on it. With that brain buster. Not a whole lot of opponents who are pitted against Shea. Kick out of this one. And I don't know if Matthew's going to be the first. Lateral press. One. Two. No, just a two count. Maybe that... The slight couple of seconds, Jaquan took the drag and reached away from the ropes, but it cost him, and Matthews now with an Irish whip. Kicks to the midsection, has to go into overdrive, realizing he is in big-time trouble right now. We got here, Hammerlock DDT, maybe Hammerlock Suplex. And Reese now, what's he going for here? The Widow's Peak, ladies and gentlemen. Going to bring the neck right down onto the shoulder. <laughs> Lateral press from Reese. Just a two count. A tweet from Rex Carter says, I am hereby officially throwing my hat into the Elimination Chamber match. I'm going to win that goddamn Intercontinental Championship from the Momo Man. Oh, poor Rex. Thinking he's on Genesis. It's okay, Rex. It's okay, sweet child. What up, Trouble? Jawbreaker staggers Jaquan. Closes in. Reed's going to try to finish with Jaquan. Shutting that shit down from coast to coast. 
And now Shaquan, a second batch of these kicks to the chest over and over and over and over and over and over again. Nash, uh, Cobb does, I told him. And slap the end of the pin. One, two. Oh, still only a two count. Jaquan can't seem to figure out how to put down Reese Matthews here. And Jaquan now in the corner just staring at the down New Gods member. Closing in Jaquan if he gets off another brain buster. I definitely help put money on the fact that Reese ain't going to kick out a second time. Into the corner again. He must have a finisher out of the corner or something, but he's having a little bit of trouble hitting it. Can't seem to work out the, the logistics here. The angle he wants to come in from. Just staring at him instead. Reese Matthews scrambling to get back to his feet. He's huffing. He's puffing that gas tank on it. He's taking a lot of damage. He's hurting for certain. And there it is. But I must die. A second time. Reese walking right into it. Jaquan Shea just waiting. Playing the game. And now they're going to seal the deal. Lateral press. One. Two. No. What? Reese putting his heart on display here tonight. My God. Kicking out of a second brain buster. Oh, the dragon! The site isn't working? What do you mean? You're clicking on the link and nothing's showing up? If so, could someone just post a new fresh link for him in the chat? Because I think Hellish told me that something might be broken with my uh, command there, but I, I'm too lazy to change it. I keep forgetting. A second Widow's Peak from Reese Matthews, but he can't capitalize. Jaquan right back to his feet. No sound like a champion. No, the site is up, but I think the link I put in the command is broken. I keep forgetting to change it, though. Oh, kick to the midsection. Reese, this time he's going to get it. The total package by Reese Matthews. Can he steal the win? What a comeback this would be. Shoots the half. One, two. No, only a two count. I said it, didn't I? These have the potential to bring the house down. This has been an awesome matchup. Salim Ismail and John Reed got something new. Uh, Going to have some work to do if they hope to outshine these two young men here from the Fusion roster. There you go. Oh, and a fresh link posted for you. That should work. Reese Matthews now shooting in for a couple of elbows to the chest. Shaquan Shea battling back to his feet. Forearm smash. I'm going to crack a couple of teeth right there. As Reese is put in the corner. Wrong time to taunt, I do believe. And it's going to cost him. Double knees to the spine. What a reversal by Matthews. And Irish Whip puts him back into the corner. What's Reese going to go for now? Oh! That sit out lariat. That was awesome. Upload it? Upload what? Topher just posted uh, the link. Topher, if you could post the link again, I would appreciate it. I want having a little bit of trouble. He's got a big old lift and reverse DDT. The tides have been turned now. Matthew's in control. Oh, look at this straight jacket. Here, trying to choke Jaquan out with his own arms. And especially the knee, applying pressure to the spine as well. I'm surprised Jaquan hasn't tapped out yet, but I think Reese is just trying to keep uh, his control right now, trying to stay in the driver's seat as it currently stands. And now just chucking him to the side like a sack of dirty laundry, like an unwanted puppy. As he goes for the pin, Jaquan could have choked himself out right there. One, just a one count. <clears throat> Maybe not. Going to go for some more elbows to the chest. Shea has had enough of that, though. Forearm smash staggers old Reese. Be sure that Paul Devine and the rest of the new gods are watching on. Of course, Reese Matthews and Mike Crimson, Sebastian Frost, all the protégés of the legendary Asian sensation. He's got a lateral press from Jaquan. One, two, only a two count, no more. Nice shot of Jaquan, sweaty back there. I always appreciate a nice shot of a sweaty back. I don't know what Jaquan's doing here. Getting that cardio up as he goes to the top rope once again. One risk too many, perhaps, or maybe not. Yo, 630 cent on. He went for it, and it backfired horribly as Reese Matthews is going to try to capitalize on that mistake. 
the new gods member a second total package right down out of the noggin reese straight into the pin middle of the ring one two three and reese matthews picks up the victory ah reach around wildy reach around wildy homie how could you forget the one and only lance romance what a matchup, though, and what a comeback by Reese Matthews. Jaquan Shay dominating for the better part of this one, at least early on. And Matthews picking up a much-needed victory here on Reality Wrestling. Like I said, though, great matchup between the two young up-and-comers. Is this supposed to take you to the app store? But you said you're on mobile, right? If you're on mobile, you have to go to classic version. So up in the corner, there's a uh, there should be like a little tab that that pulls down, and then you can hit classic version. This sounds like too much trouble for you, though, man. If you want to just whisper me the tags of your call, I can get them. And then when you get on your PC or your laptop when you get home or whatever, then you can check out the site. As Reese Matthews celebrates the win, just taking it all in. A much needed victory for not only himself, but the new gods as a whole. As we head into our main event of the evening, an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Who's going to take that fourth spot? Join Jay Davis. Jeremy Blake, and of course the champion himself, the Moo Moo Man, Randy Borton. Salim Ismail and John Reed better duke it out to find out. Next week, Kaiva and Zach Cage go one-on-one. -on -one. Andrew Briggs and Ryan Kent will battle it out. Don't tell me what to do, Gumbel. He just won. Do you want there to be a winner match, Topher? I'll do a winner match just for you, baby boy. Just for you, boo-boo. And a tweet from the Asian sensation himself. He says, this is why I push myself to be the best. My excellence trickles down to my team, and it showed tonight with that huge win for Reese. <laughs> what's, what's different on the new Reese, Gubble? Is it an is it appearance? <laughs> <clears throat> Salim Ismail certainly uh, rocking the boat with the return to CMB here. The first ever tag team champion in CMB's history. Now, upon four years ago, he held championship gold. Uh, last season, he teamed with James Walker and uh, <clears throat> Vicious and Delicious. Never got close to championship gold, but coming back with a bang, his first time venturing into singles action. Made it all the way to the finals of the Heavyweight Championship Tournament, tapping out everyone in sight, but he fell out to King Matt. A chance to bounce back here. They'll go for the International Championship, the Bollywood boy. Here's a tweet from the Bloody Brick, Chris Andrews, targeted towards Paul Dwine. He says, push harder, you twat. Something most definitely that John Reed is going to have to watch out for in that match is that Lion Tamer. Multiple variations Salim Ismail likes to pull out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He likes to pull out two different ways. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And speaking of, here comes the fallen angel, the man who had a one on one opportunity for the international championship at point break. Took Borton to the limit, but could not get the job done. A second opportunity could be his if he can get past Salim Ismail here tonight. It'd be the first time that either one of these men would venture into the elimination chamber. Randy Borton, of course, going to have the most experience. He's been in two prior 
most recently the end of last season at the second annual Exodus. And last year's Exodus too, or two years ago, the first annual Exodus. And of course, he could be joined by Zach Cage and Ryan Kent as well, who have previously been inside of the Devil's River structure. Echo, I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you. I was on CC last night. I saw that Paul Devine. Those tattoos are hideous. Really like the old ones better. It literally looks like he fell in paint. What it looks like. <clears throat> John really looking geared up and ready for action. That tweet earlier said three seconds is all I need. Here we go, Elimination Chamber Qualifier, Salim Ismail, John Reed. Referee rings that bell, and here we go. Who's going to join the fray next Sunday at Dark Carnival? Jay Davis and Jeremy Blake qualifying last night on Genesis. <laughs> Salim already going to start to play some games, some mind games here with the Fallen Angel. Trying to get into his head. Now you got to the site, Owen? That's good, my friend. You signed up, got yourself an account. Now all you have to do is go to the waiting list located inside of the roster section. Topher is usually kind enough to provide a link right to the waiting list. But like I said, once I get your call downloaded, we got that roster picture. Uh, we got rankings. You can see where your call stands. You can promo as your call in the promo section. Match cards so you know when your call is booked and all that good stuff. Stomped to the thigh there by Reed. Reed taunting himself, having a little bit of fun. As he flops Salim over onto his stomach. Now going to target the knee. Try and keep Salim Ismail grounded here. Can't lock in that lion tamer. As John Reed to the second turnbuckle. The fallen angel going to go high. Beckoning Salim to rise to his feet. Going to take a leap of faith here. Will it pay off? Double axe handle. It does indeed. <laughs> Paul Devine is killing himself via slipping in paint. Is that what happened? And a tweet from Jay Davis says, I'd have to put my money on Reed if he could actually wrestle. Don't need someone slapping me around in the chamber while I'm trying to actually win something. Jay Davis with this straight fire tonight here. Ever since he won that chamber, well, ever since he came to Genesis. And I said, to be fair, he has been on a roll. He beat Zach Cage in singles action. He won that impromptu over the top rope battle royal at point break. He beat Kenji Murakami in a close match to qualify. He's got a right to be a little bit cocky, but uh, he better watch himself because once he gets in that chamber, he'll be locked in there with five other men who are going to want him, you know, going to want him dead, going to want to beat his ass, and that's not fun. He's got a nice counter there by John Reed. It looks like uh, Salim is maybe going for a fisherman's driver. Counter into a Northern Lights. That was on the this fusion, Batman, this week. Not next week that promo takes place. God, you dummy, you big dumb. What are you, stoop? Oh, goes that super kick out of nowhere. A la Paul Anderson, but Salim Ismail, quick to see it coming, able to get out of the way. Now a front headlock and a lean John Reed against the ropes. Go for that armpit kick of doom, but John Reed counters tip for tap. Back and forth, he's going for the super kick again. Countered once more. My God, it's back and forth. Three sick counters in the span of 10 seconds. That was nice. And then a kick right to the knee. And a tweet from Crow agreeing with Jay Davis. He says, I agree if Reed can even wrestle. Savagery ganging up on the fallen angel here. Beckoning the Bollywood boy to rise to his feet here. John Reed's hungry, 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 hungry for this opportunity. And Salim Ismail's never held singles gold. And that deadly weapon of his, the Boston Crab, the modified one that needed the spawn even worse. The Lion Tamer, though, made it all the way to the finals, tapping out foos left and right. I wouldn't quite say it's 1999 just yet. It's John Reed with the win. <gasps> Revenge. Chris Andrews isn't here tonight, so John Reed just paying homage to the bloody Brit. Oh, now a jawbreaker going to stagger the fallen angel. Slim Ismail trying to get himself back into this. John Reed's not going to allow it. A couple of cracks in the jaw. It ain't no thing. Front headlock now. European uppercut staggers Ismail. Need of the gut. John Reed going in. My God. Now going to try to finish after rocking Salim's world. The fall. 
plant some face first into the canvas, looking to advance to the elimination chamber. One, two, three, and John Reed's going to Dark Carnival. What a finish there. Reed just letting his anger out on Selena. He whooped, he whooped him. Opened up a can there. And then planting him face first with the fall. And John Reed going to get himself another chance to become the international champion. He joins Jay Davis, Jeremy Blake, and Randy Borton, who will be the final two to qualify. We'll find out next week on Genesis. And those six men will duke it out inside the Demon's Domain, the 13th chamber in CMB's history, a match that will change them forever but could bring them championship gold. <laughs> Slappy counts it like it is. Beautiful finish. That's one of my favorites right there. <laughs> John Reed is just like, nope, I'm done. Look at that. The fall is what did it in for the Bollywood boy. You missed everything, Tom. Just caught, just caught the finish of reality wrestling. John Reed is coming for that international championship. Randy Borton's got his work cut out for him, man. And it's not going to be easy if he wants to go down in the history books for the longest reigning most title defenses as international champion. He is going to have quite the mountain to climb. And I'll do it just for Topher. I'll do a bonus match because I love Topher. Only for you, boo-boo. Just for you, Big Toaf, the Toaf man. <clears throat> you want to get a sneak peek of what Fusion's going to look like, ladies and gentlemen? Get a little sneak peek? <laughs> uh, it's going to be so good. You do not want to miss next week's Monday Night Fusion, my friends. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Why is it don't let me back out right now? Hello. There we go. All right, what do we want? A battle royal? What do we want? Any match within reason. What up, Defender Giant? You, uh, Tiki, Tiki Wild, right? Was that your guy there? Last season we had him for a while. <laughs> and a tweet from John Reed. He says, I can wrestle Jay Davis and Crow so y'all can suck my wang. Wang dang diggly doo? Wang doodle? Wang doodle bop? Six man, what? Tag team you want to do? Battle Royal? Let's have a vote. Six man tag team or six man battle royal? I'll put 20 seconds on the clock. Everybody put in the chat what you want to see it. Six-man tag or a six-man battle royal? What you, what you want? We got one vote for a battle royal. One vote from Tommy Boy. Tom the Cat. For a BR. For the big royale. Two votes for a battle royal. Three votes for a battle royal. Four votes for a battle royal. I think it's safe to say that the battle royal is going to bring this one home. All right, so Borton, Gumble, Echo, you each put winner twice, my friends. Let's get some winners up in her. Let's get some winners. Holla, holla. Seven oh two, gonna bring home the first spot. Uh, do we want a fusion or Genesis match? Let's go fusion, guys. We'll do fusion, guys. 
<clears throat> so 702 Owen defended <laughs> all the new guys winning <laughs> who don't know the rosters. 702 again. 702 if you don't uh, you obviously don't know what this means, but if you if you get a winner, that means you get to pick a call to be in the bonus matches. So you don't know the roster at all, and obviously I don't have your call yet, so I don't know what you want to do there. I mean, if you're on the site, you can go to the roster page real quick and try to scope someone out that you think looks cool or something. Same for you, Defended. We're going Fusion, by the way. Fusion, guys. Batman wants Man Wolf. All right. Put Man Wolf in there. I know Punkabilly's super excited right now. I don't think Gumball's here, so Borton, just do it again. Echo, do it again. 702, did you pick your guy? Can only pick one, 702. You didn't actually win twice. You want Jaquan again? Big Jaquan? <laughs> one again? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Echo went in. Oh, I don't think Devent defended one. I'll just let Punka pick someone. What do you want? Dennis Lewis? We'll put him in there. Put Dennis in there. Yeah, because, yeah. Defender doesn't know anybody. Oh, and Punka just won anyway. <laughs> so put Dennis in there. Who else won? We got 702s. We got Batmans. We got Punkas. I don't think Owen's picking anyone, so I'm going to have to do that again. <laughs> oh, did you pick Sam Valentine? Did Echo pick Valentine? Is that who picked? Topher, did you win, though? I didn't see you come up on the winner thing. Yeah, Owen's yeah, Owen's not uh I don't think Owen's coming through, so wide? I don't think that's a person, my friend. Oh, Windu, you want Windu? Okay. Owen's going for it. Owen's falling for the peer pressure. We got the domestic wolves in there, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, we need one more winner. We need quite a more winner. Somebody give it to me. Somebody give it to me. I know what you want. <laughs> We need another queener. Another queener. Another queener. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going until we get someone. Oh, Borton got it. Do you really want to put Adam Adams in there? That's your choice? You're just going to shaft Topher like that? I'm just gonna shaft Topher like that, Borton. Wow, wow, man. You know what? I did do this for Big Tof. Screw you, Borton. You got Windu in there. I'm put. I'm putting. I'm putting. I'm putting big, big, uh, big Brit in there. I'm doing this just for Topher. Screw the rules. I make the rules. What of it? Just for you, Topher. You owe me one. You owe me one Tofi, babe. And look at this assembly here for this six man over the top rope battle royal. Manwolf, Jaquan Shea, Dennis Lewis, Sam Valentine, Razor Windu, and Chris Andrews. It's too late, Echo. <clears throat> it's too late, kiddo. <laughs> Get a taste of things to come. At Dark Carnival, we can very well see Sam Valentine and Chris Andrews collide. Be, be uh, something to see if Manwolf and Razor Windu come head-to-head. -head. Tag team partners. And Jaquan Shea coming off that loss to Reese Matthews. Going to try to shake the cobwebs. And Dennis Lewis coming off that handicap loss. He and James Smith taking the uh, dive to Rip Ray. He certainly needs a win to get himself back into the back in the gear. Back in the gear. <laughs> I 
Echo's just afraid that Chris Andrews is going to eliminate Sam Valentine. He's going to cry himself to that nap. That's why. That's why he's so scared. So scared right now. Of course, next Sunday at Dark Carnival, it will be Sam Valentine and Bannon. Certainly an unholy alliance there. Teaming together to take on Chris Andrews and a partner of his choosing in preparation for Regicide. Four weeks away, a triple threat match has been made official. The Bloody Brit defends his anarchy title against Sam Valentine and Bannon in a triple threat match. <laughs> Dennis Lewis is just about scared of everything. Razor Windu is just like staring off at a distance, no idea where he is. I think it looks like Chris Andrews might be sticking something up uh, up Valentine's uh, rear end, if you know what I mean. He doesn't. He doesn't look like Valentine really uh, really dislikes it, to be honest. Hey, it ain't gay if it's in a six way, right? <laughs> you look so good to me. <clears throat> Valentine got fingered. Coming to theaters near you soon this summer. <laughs> Wait till you see Rex's next attire, though, Batman. Get ready. Oh, here he comes. What a way to kick off this match. Manwolf rushing down to the ring, ready for this opportunity at some momentum. This is an over-the-top rope battle royal, of course. Got to be tossed over the top rope. Both feet touching the floor to be eliminated. Big wins. <laughs> Owen is already a huge Windu fan. I don't blame him. The domestic terrorist is pretty hard to hate. <clears throat> I think I love everything about Jaquan Che. I've got a little bit of a hard on for him, to be honest. You know, a little bit stiff down there for this man. Oh, that guy's armpit, though. What a camera angle! Those powers of teleportation as well. <laughs> and here comes the dirtiest of them all, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Lewis, who's uh, had a pretty, pretty back and forth career. To be honest, a couple of wins, a couple of losses, but like I said, coming into this one with an L and handicap action. So a little bit embarrassing, going to try to put that behind him. Look at that leather jacket, though. Show us those muscles. Can't really see them under that dank-ass leather jacket, though. <laughs> it's raining. What do you say? <laughs> Je Je who got pinned? I don't remember. Oh, here he comes, though. The dream. Sam Valentine. Looking to pick up that all important momentum. He's got a busy month ahead of him, and it culminates at Regicide with a chance to become the Anarchy Champion. See him and the Bloody Brett cross paths here in this over-the-top rope battle royale with cheese. Uh, 
<laughs> we just know that Ryan Kent has to enter at number two this year. He's got to get it back on track. It's the only thing that matters. Delete. Delete. And as we approach the second annual Dark Carnival next Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you another match made official for the card. We are going to see Salvi, the masked man of mayhem, go head-to-head -head with primetime Pierre Thompson after they uh, got at each other's throats on Twitter following both men's losses in the triple threat last night on Genesis. They took it out on each other, and now they're going to take it out on each other further next Sunday when they go mano y mano, one on one. And the car is just getting better and better as here he comes, the domestic terrorist, Razor Windu. I don't believe we've seen his singles entrance this season because he's usually tagging with Manwolf. <laughs> it's in the record books, Suntan. And a tweet from Bryce Hurt says, No, the only thing that matters is when I call out a former world champion next week on Reality Wrestling. Hashtag star of the show. Who is this former world champion he's planning on calling out? I'm actually I'm actually looking forward. I'm, 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 I'm actually excited to see who he's going to call out and what he has to say. And here he comes. Last but certainly not least, the Blue Brett. Your CMV Anarchy Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Making the CMV Universe wait for his arrival. The two-time Anarchy Champion. The longest reigning most title defenses as Anarchy Champion. They're going to take it further in his second ring, though. Could be stopped uh, fast in his tracks at Regicide. Got to defend against not one but two people, Sam Valentine and Bannon. He doesn't have to be pinned to lose his championship. And Andrews knows that feeling. At the fourth annual Ascendance, he defended the international title in a fatal four-way match. It was a two out of three falls fatal four-way match. Or a first to two falls fatal four-way match, rather. The better way of saying it. Chris Andrews wasn't pinned either time to lose his belt. Will that happen once again to the Brit, who is bloody? Or will he walk out still the champion? That's in four weeks' time. This is tonight. Over the top rope battle royal. Future in the superstars of Monday Night Fusion. And here we go. Windu going to go right for Shaquan Chaz. The Brit trying to eliminate Manwolf right out of the gate. Dennis Lewis taking it to the dream. And a nice gourd buster there by the domestic terrorists to take down JS. <laughs> Rolling snapmare by Windu as Andrews just taking out all of his aggression on poor Manwolf here, beating that face in. <laughs> Overhand punch. Oh my god, what an elimination this would be for Manwolf to take out the Anarchy Champion. That would be beautiful. That would just be poetry. Oh, but Windu and, and show at the hands of Shay here, who's desperate to get a win after losing to Reese Matthews on Reality Wrestling. Over the top rope goes Sam Valentine now, putting a precarious position at the hands of the dirtiest man in the game. Manwolf going to try to eliminate the Anarchy Champion once again. Tugging at a... Uh, I don't know if Andrews likes that very much. Going to try to get out of the corner the way he was uh, grabbing his ass there. I don't know. Maybe, a little, maybe touching the balls a little bit. Maybe just the tip. I don't know. Sam Valentine and Dennis Lewis getting in the way of uh, Razor Window and Jaquan Shea here. Jaquan Shea. A very bad position on the bottom rope, hanging on for dear life. Windu trying to get that first elimination, but not just yet. Last man standing will walk out with that big victory momentum on their side, a surplus of it. Momentous momentum, right? Windu trying to eliminate JS once again. There goes Dennis Lewis over the top rope. In trouble at the hands of the dream, and Dennis Lewis is teetering. Dennis Lewis just got saved inadvertently by Jaquan Shea. Swinging neckbreaker. Here comes Dennis Lewis back into the fray. Front headlock on Valentine. Certainly uh, defeating one of the number one contenders for the Anarchy Championships. Hashtag CMV, Owen, will help me a lot to just find them easier. Whatever other hashtag you desire is fine, but CMV to put in there would most definitely help me out a bunch. As Jaquan Shea going to try to get the first elimination, but Razor Windu saves himself there. Oh, now the Judgment. 
And Spinebuster chokes like mess combo. Oh my god, man, Wolf has Chris Andrews teetering. Oh, Chris Andrews hangs on, dear god. Can you imagine Manwolf eliminating the bloody Brit? He's going to try to do it again. Brit can't say we got an edge over Manwolf here. Back elbow connects to the side of the head. Out onto the apron goes Jaquan Shea. When are we going to try to get him out of here? The bloody Brit, what's he looking for? Manwolf up against the ropes. Sam Valentine, we could have three eliminations here quite possibly. There goes Jaquan Shea, the first man eliminated at the hands of Razor Window. And there goes Manwolf eliminated by the bloody Brit. At least we didn't see Manwolf and Razor Windu uh, face off against each other. They kept that that team spirit up high. Jaquan Shea eliminated Manwolf just a couple of seconds afterwards. He's out of here. Are those your cause, Owen? War, Keeper, Pestilence, and Anarchy? Are those your uh, are those your cause? Yeah, if you want the gal, the vixen we call him, then that'll go on Cop's Ferocity show, but I'll grab maybe one or two of the other ones. Cop can have the other. We do have multiple shows. If you join the website, you get the links to uh, all Cop stuff there on the side. Four remain. What is Andrews doing? Looking for the, looking for, that was weird. Oh, Window could be in trouble, though. Oh, maybe he just might have just countered the finisher. That's good news for the domestic terrorist. That's Dennis Lewis going. Hey, look at it this way, Batman. Manwolf was not the first eliminated. Like probably everyone thought he would be. Within seconds of uh, Jaquan J, but still. Oh, taking a suplex city, baby, is Razor Windu. Dennis Lewis and Sam Valentine been at one another's throats since the bell rings. To like, have deep, deep rooted hatred for one another, it seems. Yeah, Anarchy could be the Anarchy champion. Oh, 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 what an elimination for Dennis Lewis. Dear God, powerbombed over the top rope. Oh, my God. And speaking of powerbombs, Chris Andrews going ham on Windu. Dennis Lewis eliminating one of the number one contenders to the Anarchy Championship. Powerbombing Valentine over the top rope. I would have liked to see the Dream and, and the Bloody Brick come, come to blows, but... <sighs> Unfortunately, Valentine not lasting. The final three, Razor, Windu, Chris Andrews, and Dennis Lewis remain here in this over-the-top rope battle royal. Oh, look at this. Dennis Lewis and the Brit going to try to work together? No. Oh, now they are. Or are they? I don't know what's going on, quite frankly. Oh, an elbow right to the throat, though. Dennis Lewis playing it safe, a great strategy in a battle royal type scenario to just let the other guys duke it out and chill in the corner. Rest up, kick to the gut, DDT by Dennis Lewis. He's be teaming up on Razor Window here as the play. The bigger man out of all of them, so fair, fair enough. Uh, upload the ones that you want me to get, Owen. I'll get whichever one is up, my friend. Oh! Oh, there goes Razor Wendu. Power slammed right over the top rope. And then there were two. The Anarchy champion, Chris Andrews, remains. Dennis Lewis tossed right in front of the camera. Chris Andrews looking to bring home that big sweep of momentous momentum. Oh, but it seems like Dennis Lewis is content on hanging on. And here's a tweet from Bob Luger who says, Ouch, Sam, taking quite the bump. Keep it up, buddy. Don't give up. You're my favorite to win that Anarchy title. BT Dubs, thanks for the whole Lugie idea. Love it. Bob Luger, a little bit condescending, I kind of feel there with that tweet. Chris Andrews in a dominant position. Dennis Lewis in trouble as he's put into the corner. Chris Andrews feeling him up, copping, copping a quick feel here. But Dennis Lewis doesn't swing that way, unfortunately. A nice Hurricane Rana. I would expect something like that from Dennis there. The dirtiest player in the game. Owen just saved the day. Bless Owen. Oh, Dennis Lewis. If he eliminates the Anarchy Champion and wins this battle royal, he could see himself put in line for a title shot post-regicide, maybe. Oh, but Chris Andrews saves himself, and now Dennis Lewis on the ring apron. Chris Andrews has him teetering. 
leaning back, Dennis Lewis trying with all of his might. Can he last though? Can he get himself back in the ring? Will Chris Andrews bring home the victory? He will! The bloody Brit reigns supreme in this impromptu over the top rope battle royale. The Brit came, he saw, he conquered. A great showing by Dennis Lewis, but the Brit having none of it. Scoring three eliminations. There you go. That's all Razor Windy. Also eliminated uh, Manwolf. And then, of course, lastly, Dennis Lewis there. That last shot of the ramp, though. And Chris Andrews heading into Schmitty Presents Monday Night Fusion where he will battle the undisputed champion, Justin Sane, inside of a steel cage. Champ versus champ. You are not going to want to miss that. You might not like Schmitty, but he did book some pretty, uh, well, that's really the only fair and cool match he kind of booked. The others are just punishing his uh, rivals, really. But thank you guys for joining me for Reality Wrestling Edition number five. Uh, if you like the show, you want to see more, make sure you do follow me. If you want your call on the show, exclamation point CMV, exclamation point join in the chat. You get a link to our website. Follow those simple steps. You can get your call involved with the program. And uh, all the past episodes on my YouTube channel, linked on my Twitch info page. And I will see you guys on Monday for Schmitty Presents Monday Not Fusion.